Hello everyone, this is RPA Friday session number 27. This time the topic is UiPath Modern Design Experience Activities and I will prepare next videos and next sessions. This is part number one where I want to cover some introduction to the modern design experience and to uh, show you how to use the activity called use application slash browser. For those who don't know me, my name is Roman and I'm an RPA developer and in spare time I'm creating these videos to help the community learn RPA and learn UiPath tools. I would love to just say that I'm part of Robot ICT family, a company based in Czech Republic, where I represent the team of RPA developers helping our clients to deliver their RPA processes and support them in case of their needs. So if you need any help with RPA, definitely contact us. All the links are in the video descriptions and if you need anything please ask in the comments if you will feel like this video was nice please give it a like and subscribe to our channel thanks a lot so to the topic you may already heard about the modern design experience but maybe you are still not sure when and how to use them but don't worry they are very easy to use and their usage can bring a lot of benefit especially making your automation more robust and flexible your code less bulky and your automation more pleasant. Also, you can only take advantage of object repository when using the modern design activities. Uh, you can also check my another video where I am covering object repository. It's RPA Fridays number 10. So you can see how the object repository works with modern design uh, experience. And modern design activities also have an advanced data scraping techniques and few new activities like mouse scroll. You will also enjoy enhanced UI Explorer and activities with selector fallbacks. I had to say that it's hard to cover every little feature that modern activities have, so I advise you to try play with them, experiment and explore yourself. So let's see uh, how we can use it. When you have your studio open, go to the project settings, that's this little gear icon, and toggle the little toggle here at the first general tab to modern design experience to yes. It may be already toggled on, that means that in your UiPath Studio settings you already have this as a default. It will ask me to reload it and in a while voila, this is modern design experience. Not much change on first sight, right? But let's check out the activities. In the UI automation activities, these activities are new, like for example these ones, or these ones. If you want, you can turn on the old classic activities on and off by using this funnel icon here, and you tick show classic. This will also show the classic activities here, they will have a separate folder there, and you can use both kinds of activities, and they are in some way compatible. You can distinguish them from each other by their icons. For example, let's search for click activity and you can see this is the modern design experience click activity and this one is from the classic. So you notice that the modern design, they have this little round or eye or what that is icon next to themselves. So this is how you can distinguish them when you search for them. But I advise you to choose in your project to use or not to use modern design experience and maybe just stay with one kind. Uh, vice versa, when you are using the classic design experience, you can show the modern activities and you will have a show modern here. Let me quickly turn on the classic and to show you one little difference. For example, here, when you are in UI automation browser, you can see we have quite a lot of activities here. For example, go back, go forward, close tab, refresh, and all these activities are in the modern design experience covered by one single activity. This one, navigate browser. See, so this is one of the way how the modern design experience recreated some of the activities. So there are not so many of them, rather there are activities that are capable of multiple things. But that was just an example. You can use it only within the use application slash browser activity and that's what I will show you today. Let's disable the classic ones so we are not confused. And let's dive into what I want to show you today. And that's the activity called use application slash browser. It's a core activity. Let's drag and drop this activity. 
This activity has the ability to cover functionality of classic activities like open browser, attached browser and open application and in some way also close application and close tab. I will demonstrate this activity on a browser. So let's indicate a browser. This is a browser, that's our website. You can visit it. And let's see what will happen. Maybe you also saw that it is possible to drag and drop objects from the object repository. That's what is covered in the RPA Friday session number 10. Okay, let's closer explore its properties. There are many new features. Some of them you already know, some useful things have been added. So continue on error, that is a common known thing and a display name that works the standard way. The first difference is that timeout is no longer in milliseconds, but in seconds. See, the amount of time in seconds, that could be confusing, but I personally like it that it's in seconds and I think it takes um, a double. So it could be eventually one and a half second, right? So you can put a timeout for how long, uh, this activity should try to perform, so to uh, open the browser or attach the browser, we will get to it. The Unifeed application target, that's an interesting thing. And you can see that because I selected the browser, I am giving, I'm given a selector and a URL for the uh, website. In case you will be playing around with some applications, for example, I don't know, Microsoft Office tools, you will also see uh, if there will be a some file open that there will be passed to that file and maybe you can also add some arguments. So it is both for browser and application both together. In case you want to use a different browser there is no option to change it like it we were used to but you will just indicate a different browser and it will rewrite from Firefox selector to I don't know Chrome selector. The input element and output element is also a known thing from classic activities and can be used to reuse a live element or to keep the element of the app or browser saved for next steps in your workflow. So the options part, that's where it starts to be interesting. The close has three options. Never, if opened by app browser or always. It is quite understandable what always and never is doing. The if open by app browser means that UiPath will close the application or browser only if it has been opened by the activity itself, so if it wasn't already opened. The next logical related property is open, so let's take a look at this one. And this, and this one has never, if not open and always options. I think it is clear how to use it. And I personally find it as a very nice thing that you can set up. There are scenarios where you may be unsure if to use a touch browser or open browser from the classic. And this is a neat solution. Decide what should the behavior be. By the way, the default values for these two can be found in a project settings. When you go to UI Automation Modern, see the application slash browser. And you can see that the close and open, these are the default values, right? So in case you leave it uh, blank, it will command as here it's stated. And you can rewrite these default values by choosing the appropriate option. So that's a little note. There we have input mode. Don't worry, I won't skip it. You can choose between hardware events, simulate, Chromium API, window messages and background. You can read about each from these input modes in the documentation and I guess some names are familiar to you, especially the simulate and window messages. If you set this for example to simulate, it will try to execute all UI interaction activities inside in simulate mode, like simulate type and simulate click if it's set to true. Well, isn't this cool? You don't have to set this activity by activity one by one anymore. Just one setup and it's done. The resize window is uh, where you handle the size of a window. Simple as that. To understand the window attached mode, let me quote the documentation. Application instance. Inner activities search the indicated application instance, including all parent and child windows, like alerts, pop-ups, and etc. Other instances of the application are excluded. Single window. Inner activities search only in the indicated window. Are you wise from that? <laughs> Just play around. So the last part, options browser are only used when you're working with the browser, of course. 
the incognito slash private window property will allow you to open the browser in anonymous window. The last two options are related to picture-in-picture -picture automation, and since this is a bit more complicated to explain, I would love to point you for now to the official documentation of the activity and also to some article. I'm putting all the links in the video description. Okay, so that's it for today. In the next session, I will cover click and type into activities, and we will take a look at the abilities of the advanced UI explorer and on selectors fallback using regex and using image automation. It will be awesome. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, please type them in a the comment and I will answer them as soon as I will get back to our channel. All the related information are in the links in the video description. Also, there is a link to our Robot ICD community forum that you can check our articles and meet another developers. I advise you to also sign up for our RPA Fridays. Thanks a lot and see you next time. And I wish you happy automation.